We have some scary numbers here to report to you from the FBI. Uh, the number of hate crimes reported to police nationwide surged in 2015 by 6.7% compared to 2014. So let me give you uh, some more details here and then we'll break it down. They say far outpacing the national increase in hate crime overall was the elevated number of bias crimes against Muslims. The FBI said there were 257 anti-Islamic incidents last year compared to 154 reported in 2015, an uptick of 67 percent. Overall, there were 5,850 hate crimes counted in this year's FBI report. African Americans were targeted more than any other group. The FBI said there were 1,745 anti-black crimes last year, or 7.6 percent more than in the previous report. There were 614 anti-white crimes in 2015, compared to 593 the year before. The number of anti-Hispanic or Latino crimes was unchanged at 299 in the two most recent reports. Uh, and they say crimes against people because of sexual orientation were the second most common form of hate crime. There were 1,053 in 2015 compared to 1,017 the year before. Uh, so I'm going to sound so corny and so cheesy here, but I mean it, man. So, I mean, it needs to be said. Somebody's got to say it and I'll be the one to say it. Can't we all just get along? There's a spike against uh, in hate crimes for everybody. Like, across the board. Just more hate crimes everywhere. So, man, I really... It's, the mood in the country is, is tense. And it's tense sometimes for ideological reasons, but I think a lot of it really does have to do with um, the fact that the middle class is stagnant and people feel like they they can't get ahead. Now, don't get me wrong. The unemployment rate under Obama is much lower than it was under George W. Bush. And in some ways, we've made strides in the right direction. But look, I think that fact says a lot. There are more people in poverty now and the middle class is stagnant and they keep outsourcing factory jobs and, you know, people feel hopeless. And as a result of that, you're going to have people, latent bigotry always comes to the surface when times are rough. You know, it's harder to be a, a douche to your neighbor or to be a racist prick when you're doing well. When I mean, you're making a good income, you know, you got a decent job, you go, there's things to do in your town. It's a lot easier to scapegoat the other when things aren't going well for you because you feel like, well, they jumped ahead of me in line. This is bullshit. You know, I got laid off, I'm not making anything, and my black neighbor's affirmative action, now I'm sure they're living large, and blah, 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 blah. So it's like, you know, we need to address the underlying causes. Now, there are some people who it's just ideological, and they're just bigots. <laughs> so the way you combat that is just argue against the bigotry. But for a lot of people, it's more birth in uh, economics and the lack of hope. So we got to address that problem, too. And, you know, this is why I think Bernie Sanders' candidacy was so important is because you have somebody who's arguing for the basics that would make people's lives better. Universal health care, universal education, uh, make the minimum wage a living wage, have unionization so that we have a stronger, vibrant middle class. I mean, these are the things that would revitalize these communities and they wouldn't turn to bigotry if that was the case. Again, it's harder to be angry at your neighbor if you're doing well. So it's sad. And by the way, since Trump's election... There was a spike in hate crimes. There were th at least 300 reported incidents, hate crime incidents. That's not good, man. Now, I didn't come I didn't do the individual stories for you because it's probably it's better to talk about the statistics and the macro picture. But there were stories that, you know, during show prep I would come across them uh during the week of since Trump got elected, there'd be, you know, people vandalizing property where black people live with the n-word and um scary things about rounding people up and you know trump written with the nazi symbol on minorities homes and attacks against muslims and you know people like there many instances of uh, people trying to pull off the the hijab the headscarf from muslim women saying when this is trump's america now and it's just sad man it's just sad now thankfully Thankfully, uh, during the 60 Minutes interview, when this was brought up to Trump, it, you know, he said, stop, 
stop. I would anybody who's doing that. It makes me sad. I don't want to hear that. Stop. If you're doing those kinds of uh, you know attacks against people, stop. So I'm happy he said that, but I really want to see de-escalation here. And for the record, it's not like uh, you know. I don't want to do a false equivalence to both sides do it argument here, but it is true that there's been a lot of uh, protests where, like, it's almost like hate crimes in the other direction, where there was, like, a sign that said, Rape Melania. Oh, what are you doing? That's fucking horrendous. Who says that? I mean, what's wrong with you? And there were, you know, uh, uh, we hate all white people, shit like that written. So there's, again, and by the way, this report says there's an increase in hate crimes across the board, including anti-white hate crimes. So it's not just minority communities, but, you know, it, they give you the breakdown of the numbers overall. But bottom line is, and I'm out here, I want to tell people hatred's not the answer. We got to de-escalate and we got to work together and we got to try to find solutions that would make the country better. And unfortunately, it feels like we're at a very tense moment in U.S. history and world history. And, um... It feels like we're on the brink of disaster. Let's take a couple deep breaths. Let's de-escalate. And specifically what the left should do is get together and really plot our takeover of the Democratic Party because they're too establishment, they're too corporatist. And the way to really fix the problems in the country is to have a strong left that actually fights for the people and gets our policy goals implemented. I think if that were the case, you'd see hate crimes across the board dip down.